Good afternoon, everyone. I am Colonel Mike McGinley, and I'm the director of the Boston Office of the Defense Innovation Unit. Thanks to FedTech for the opportunity to speak with you today. This is a fantastic opportunity to build the defense innovation ecosystem, and you play a key part in that. I'd like to take the next few minutes to provide a brief overview of the Defense Innovation Unit and to talk with you about how we engage the non-defense business sector and the startup technology companies and help develop dual-use technology solutions that tackle some of the Department of Defense's most critical modernization challenges. I'd also like to take some time to share with you a couple of tricks and techniques that uh, I've witnessed and seen and helped develop over the last four years of my tenure at the Defense Innovation Unit and hopes that you can use these as you work uh, within the defense innovation ecosystem. First, let me explain what DIU does. Uh, our mission is straightforward, and that is to accelerate commercial technology for national security. DIU consists of about 100 military, civilian, and contractor employees, and we report to the Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering. We have four main offices. Uh, our headquarters is, is in Mountain View, Mountain View California. Uh, we have an office in Boston, Massachusetts, in Austin, Texas, and in the Pentagon. And we're the only DOD organization that really is exclusively focused on fielding and scaling commercial technology across the entire Department of Defense. That means all the services, all the combatant commands, and all the uh, fourth estate defense agencies. So what do we focus on? Well, really five areas. So we have cyber, uh, we have autonomy, AI, ML, space, and human systems. Now, because DIU is made up from personnel from every service, our objective is to take and scale prototypes across the entire department. So we can find something that works in the Army, we want to be able to scale that to the Navy or combatant command and beyond. So it's worth spending a moment noting why we're focused on commercial technology in the first place. In short, it's because we recognize the importance of DoD partnering with non-traditional companies to accelerate adoption of commercial technology. Now, specifically, the R&D expenditures has moved away from the government relatively, uh, largely to the commercial market. Now, in the early 1980s, commercial R&D expenditures began outpacing government research and development expenditures. Now, today, that R&D spend uh, gap, if you will, uh, commercial R&D spend outpaces government R&D spend by about three times. So it's significant. And if you take that research and development spend as a proxy for innovation, it becomes apparent what the Department of Defense needs to do to succeed. And that's to focus on engaging commercial business in a new and meaningful way to take advantage of that innovation. Okay, so to be able to do that, we have to have access to commercial technologies and commercial companies that build them. And we also have to give those companies an incentive to work with us. Let me give you some insight and some idea of how we do that. Now, in short, I'd like you to think of DIU as a market maker. We broker deals between our DOD partners, again, whether the combatant commands, military services, or fourth estate defense agencies, and commercial companies. And our goal is to prototype and scale advanced commercial technology. So our approach is unique within the DOD ecosystem because of a few key aspects that I'd like to highlight for you today. Number one is our defense-wide focus, right? We're not, we're not a service, we're focused broadly across the department. Number two is our deep relationship with both the venture capital community and commercial industry leaders. And third is our very unique outcome-oriented process that uh, we have refined over the last five years. So how does our process work? I'm happy to report to you today that it's refreshingly simple. There's a series of steps that I will I'll walk you through. So first, DIU curates hard problems that our DOD partners are trying to solve. We work with them, importantly, to get funding lined up for both an initial prototype and long-term fielding. We'll have more on that later. Second, we're going to review the technology landscape to ensure that a commercial market exists that's sufficient to address the DOD problem at hand. Now, in other words, what I'm saying here is that DIU, as our organization, does not engage or pursue problems that don't have existing commercial solutions. Now, third, what we do is we post on our website the problem that we're trying to solve. We use plain English, 
Uh, we limit our solicitation to approximately two paragraphs to keep it simple. Uh, and we ask companies to show us how they're gonna solve the problem using either a five page white paper or a 15 slide PowerPoint deck, things that most companies already have at hand. Uh, and the companies with the best proposals will provide us uh, an in, will be invited to provide us an in-depth presentation. Uh, usually it's in person or was in person pre-COVID. Uh, and now I'd say uh, it'll be done via video. Now, fourth step is that the company or companies, if there are multiple awardees, begin working on a milestone-based contract to develop the prototypes. Now, fifth is important because if a company is successful in developing that prototype, DIU is going to coordinate a transition that ideally will scale across the entire Department of Defense. Now, this is our ultimate objective. If we get this right, if you think about this, it creates a major win for the company or multiple companies because what you've done is you've thrown that total addressable market. Number two, it helps the government because you have decreased per unit cost and you have greater interoperability. So here's an example of our, of our process in action. In 2016, DARPA had a uh, Cyber Grand Challenge uh, and recognized, we, the DOD, recognized the value of, of finding automated technology to evaluate cyber vulnerabilities. Um, and what we did was use the speed and flexibility of our other transaction authority to uh, establish a project and a solicit uh, essentially the entire commercial marketplace for any company with systems to, quote, automatically find previously unreported vulnerabilities in software without source code and automatically generate patches to remediate vulnerabilities with minimal false positives, end quote. That's it. Very, very simple, very, very brief to the point, but open to the world to see who can give us the best solutions. So we kept that specific solicitation open for a week. We had 16 companies that came in and responded. Of those, we selected five with the most promising technology, uh, including four All Secure, which is actually the winner of the DARPA Cyber Grand Challenge. So in total, we had, uh, I believe it was 26 business days, uh, 37 calendar days uh, from solicitation to the time of award. Uh, you know, perhaps most amazing was that we were able to make our first award to All Secure uh, in, for about $5 million in just nine business days. All right, so let me share you uh, with you now two models that I believe will help you as you figure out how do you navigate within this defense innovation ecosystem. It's very, very dynamic, it's moving very quickly. But if you come up with the right model, it will really help you in the long term. So first, the first model articulates the key aspects of what makes a good DIU project. I believe they apply by extension fairly well to anyone engaging in the dual use space. The second model is gonna help you engage and navigate the DOD acquisition system and really think how do you identify different organizations there. So let's begin with, uh, with the first model. Now, it's imperative that an organization seeking a DOD or seeking a solution has access to funding that takes that solution beyond just a prototype and all the way to scale and ultimately to fielding and production. And that's key, right? And it's, we talked about this before. It's important for everybody, both the government and the industry to be able to do that. And if you don't have that lined up in the beginning, it's almost impossible to get that uh, after, uh, after the prototype is sitting there. It could be a two year wait before your follow on funding comes in. Second, we at DIU require a commercial solution available. And by doing this, we're assuring ourselves to take advantage to a large extent anyway, to existing commercial research and development that puts less burden on the US taxpayer and it also allows us to move more quickly uh, and uh, at the speed of business. Uh, next is we really focus on transformative projects. So for you, what I would suggest is think in terms of how does your solution benefit the government in terms of cost or schedule or performance? And what we're looking to do at TIU is looking for a 10X in, in any one of those. Ideally, it's performance that's the most important. Uh, if you're on the government side, think about it the same way. Why am I doing this? What is the expected value in cost, schedule, performance? So fourth, we're gonna focus on products that can be prototyped in about 24 months or less. And that's important because if business is moving at the speed of heat, we need to be moving that fast. And if we can't get us, for example, a cyber project out the door, a prototype in less than two years, we're wrong, right? So if you think about that, what would you tolerate in business? Generally, that's what we're looking to tolerate in government. All right, and fifth, can we get to a fielded solution in less than three years? 
And fielding is very, very difficult because it's more than just coming up with the best technology. There are legal issues. There are policy issues. Uh, there are regulatory issues. Have you engaged the right people? All those come into play and are critical as you approach, can you actually get what you have developed to the field? Uh, and this is important and actually brings me to my second model, which is successful to successful D, uh, DOD engagement. So what I want you to do is think about when you're working with the Department of Defense, you really need to move in parallel in three different stages. So first, you need to be aware of what is the headquarters organization doing? They're going to be your idea champions. They're going to help you with move the heavy rocks uh, over the goal line. And if you're not engaging them from the very beginning, by the time your technology is ready, it may be too late to get that ATO or the timeline will be just unbearable. Second, you need to understand that an acquisition organization generally exists to think through life cycle management of your project. Are they on board or not? If they're not on board, you probably have a problem because they're gonna look through all the way through the sustainment um, and bringing uh, your project or your prototype into a program of record, which is uh, the, the, really the best way to guarantee that long-term funding. And the third organization I want you to think about is getting and engaging your, the needs of your end users and having them involved at every stage of the process. Now, we've found as the DoD gets more, uh, a better understanding of commercial agile software development processes, that becomes easier, this understanding of, you know, what's the user story? What do the users need? How do I keep them involved? But again, you cannot focus exclusively on your user to the detriment of everyone else. So to recap, to think through, there are three main organizations in the department acquisition system that you need to consider. The headquarters organizations, number one, the acquisition organizations, number two, and finally, your end user organizations, right? So keep all of those in mind as you move forward. All right, so I've given you now uh, an overview of DIU. I've given you two different models to think about when you're engaging, uh, but does it work? Does this process work? Uh, and I'm proud to say that it, it really does. Uh, I've been here for four years, and as I'm winding up my tour and looking back, I say, well, geez, do we have any examples here uh, of what works? And the, and the answer is resounding yes. The process that we have put in place at DIU uh, and that builds and is collaborative with all these other innovation organizations is successful. It has changed the way that the DOD has done business. So let's look at it. I'll give you three examples. Number one, uh, there's a small company uh, who we'll consider it was previously a non-traditional defense contractor. They were founded in 2015. They had received less than $1 million in angel investment. Um, and the company won its first DOD contract through DIU. Uh, it was to build a half a million dollar prototype. Less than 18 months later, uh, that project successfully transitioned. Uh, and in 2019, the, country, the company was awarded a follow-on contract with a $46 million contract ceiling. Second, there's a cyber contract, uh, cyber threat intelligence company that was founded in 20, 2009. Uh, they had, were private equity backed uh, and DIU awarded them a $1.6 million contract. Uh, they subsequently won a follow-on contract with a $50 million ceiling uh, and were acquired by a private equity firm uh, for $780 million, right? And the company's majority shareholder uh, noted that DIU was an important catalyst and partner in unlocking the DoD market. The third example I'd like to give you is of an AI ML company that was also founded in 2009. The company had been, been backed with approximately $140 million uh, in private funding. It was considered a large non-traditional company. So DIU awarded that company a $9 million prototype contract. Uh, and about two years later, in January of this year, uh, uh, basically DIU brokered a follow-on contract worth $95 million in funding. Now I give you these three examples uh, uh, because I think that they're indicative of the power of the process uh, and, and of DOD's new acquisition model to engage non-traditional companies quickly and at a level that will excite uh, both the owners uh, and the investors of those companies as well as those who work and get a chance to work on really meaningful uh, DOD problems. Now, the Army's X-Tech Summit is a fantastic showcase uh, of novel dual-use technology, uh, and I encourage participants, uh, both government and not, to consider how DIU can support you uh, and the Army as you endeavor to obtain dual-use technology. 
uh, to ensure that uh, our soldiers never enter a fair fight. So thank you again for your time today, uh, and I look forward to engaging with you later.